So an assassination attempt was made on Donald Trump's life in Butler, Pennsylvania, which is about 300 miles from where I live. And there are too many questions that need to be answered for how the Secret Service could have allowed this to happen. More on that in a minute. But in this video, I want to go over why this guy took a shot at Trump and has nothing to do with anything Donald Trump has done or said, because everything that the libnuts say that Donald Trump has done or said are bold-faced lies. And I want to point out who these people are who are responsible. The level of rhetoric is just off the charts with these people. The people who did nonstop telling the crazies out there on their side of the aisle that Donald Trump was a real threat to their lives. They can't get away from the rhetoric because we have them on video. I mean, this goes back to 2020 when candidate Joe Biden kept saying that he didn't want to debate Trump. He wanted to take him behind the gym. We're all supposed to understand that among Libnut chuckles, that he meant he wanted to beat the living hell out of him. That was actual violent rhetoric coming out against a political opponent by the Democrat candidate that was applauded by the Democrats and their Democrat friends in the media, which is pretty much most of the media anyway. And now they're all going to either blame Trump or they're going to act like it's the most horrific thing that could have ever happened and no such thing could ever happen like that again and there's no reason to have violence and yada, yada, yada. But we all know that the left have always been the violent ones, and that they have used a single riot that lasted two and a half hours on January 6th with less than 3% of the people who were there to protest peacefully. You had thousands upon thousands and thousands of people who were there protesting peacefully, and a riot broke out in a small area. Now, the people who are involved in the riot were not the people who went into the building, but that's what they told you. That is the bullshit story that they have built, and they tried to claim that Donald Trump was the one who was behind it all so that they could ratchet up all of their rhetoric against Trump. They can get away with saying that he is a threat to democracy. He's a threat to your life because he incited that riot. You and I know better. We're going to cover it here today. Let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome back. So for months, no. Years leading up to the Butler, Pennsylvania rally shooting, Democrats have led a chorus of hate-filled rhetoric that Donald Trump being reelected would be an end to our democracy. All four years that he was in office, they were saying he's destroying our democracy, yet nothing happened like that. I mean, you and I both followed his time in office. He made America great again. That's why they can't stand him, because he doesn't play their way. Now, forget that he never did anything in his first term or even came close to it. But don't forget the fact that Joe Biden has been doing anti-democratic things his entire term. I have listed them here on this channel ad nauseum. We'll get into it in a little bit. But this call for negativism and violence, negative force against all that is Trump, started in 2016. You had the same Democrats like low IQ Maxine Waters. She was the first one, actually, um, the first prominent Democrat to come out and tell her supporters to go after cabinet members of the Trump administration. Do you remember that? Well, here's a little here's a little medley of of the Democrats. Give this a listen. It's unbelievable. I, I, I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country. Maybe there will be. Really? People need to start taking to the streets. This is a dictator. You know, there needs to be unrest in the streets for as long as there is unrest in our lives. Enemies of the state. Show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. Do something about your dad's immigration practices, you feckless. When they go low, we kick them. How do you resist the temptation to run up and wring her neck? The biggest terror threat in this country is white men, most of them radicalized right up to the right. I thought he should have punched him in the face. I said, even if you lost, he you insulted your wife. Yes. He came down the escalator and called Mexicans rapists and murders. He said, well, what do you think I should have done? I said, I think you should have punched him in the face and then gotten out of the race. You would have been a hero. I'd like should have punched him in the face. And then here's this prayer. Punch him in the face. I said, if we were in high school, I'd take him behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. Next. Punch some people in the face. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? They're still going to have to go out and put a bullet in Donald Trump. And that's a fact. Did you hear that? And then you had Snoop Dogg, who has seen the light because Biden is such a screw up that he's now on Trump's side because he sees that a lot of other people are turning to Trump because Despite his mean tweets all those years, he made America great again for millions of people. 
Look as his character is stabbed to death. Where is John Wilkes Booth when you need him? I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. The Missouri State Donovan. Senator is under investigation by the Secret Service after saying she hopes President Trump is assassinated. I will go and take Trump out tonight. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And well, that's not violent rhetoric. They say, no, she was telling them, get in their face and, and argue with them. Dude, you tell a bunch of radical live nuts, get in their face and tell them that they're not welcome here. W what is that? That's assault. Assault is not hitting someone. Battery is hitting someone. Assault is putting someone in fear of being harmed. You get into someone's face and say, you're not welcome here. Get out. That is assault. She's telling people to assault cabinet members of the Trump administration. You tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. And sadly, the domestic enemies to our voting system and wow. our honoring our Constitution are, are right at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. They're not going to stop before Election Day in November, and they're not going to stop after Election Day. And she's talking about the BLM riots, the St. George Floyd rioters. That's what she's talking about here. Remember, Amla was one who put out a shout out for that organization that took donations to bail out rioters. Now, she claims, oh, no, they were bailing out peaceful protesters. But see, here's the problem. Peaceful protesters don't get arrested, do they? Only violent rioters get arrested. And she put the word out that people should support this organization that was bailing people out. And that should be, everyone should take note of that on both levels, that this isn't, they're not gonna let up and they should not. If you think we're rallying now, you ain't seen nothing yet. Okay guys, ready? Here is a map of the situation at the rally in Butler, PA. So you can see that the green line shows where the Secret Service were in their line of sight to the shooter, right? The red line, but the circle at the end shows where Trump was standing and on the other end was where the shooter was. Okay, so how could they have not seen him? How could they have not have someone detailed on all those roofs over there? You, you could be anywhere in the vicinity. You could have drones up in the air. Right? How is it possible that the Secret Service allowed that guy to get up there? Well, it's possible because, believe it or not, Donald Trump does not have the full protection package yet from the Secret Service. Can you imagine this? He is a former president of the United States just four months out from a presidential election against an incumbent president. And Joe Biden has full protection package, but Donald Trump does not because Joe Biden will not allow him to have it. What the hell is wrong with that? Right? And think about this. RFK Jr. doesn't have a snowball's chance in hell in winning, but he's still a legitimate presidential candidate. And... Biden will not give him any Secret Service protection. And the reason why is because the Biden camp is afraid that RFK Jr. is going to siphon some people from him. And so if he's not given Secret Service protection, he has to pay for his own private security, which costs a hell of a lot of money. You have no idea how much that costs. Round the clock security like that for all these, these rallies that he's going to do, right? And so that takes money out of his campaign coffers. And that means that he's going to have less money to campaign. He's going to have less money to buy ads and stuff like that. This was done intentionally. You know, we wonder what led us to this point, right? So right here, you have a guy who was able to crawl onto that roof and get a shot off. Now, I saw a couple of videos today, and, and, and we're not into, like, the conspiracy theory mode right now because I saw a couple of them where they showed – the sniper, the Secret Service sniper, and he was up on a roof and he, he, he had him nailed. He, he, was, he had him pinned in, in the bullseye, as Joe Biden would say, and he didn't fire. Some are speculating that he got an order not to fire. I don't believe that. I, I just don't believe that. But he did not fire until the guy started firing on Trump. And then he took him out. Now, why was that? Will we ever know why that was? But think about it right here. How come... In that entire area, because you see a parking lot in front, and then you have all these roofs. Did they not cover those roofs? Did they not have police around the bottom of those buildings walking around, covering every single entrance to the perimeter around those buildings? 
They didn't have drones flying above, helicopters, nothing like that. This was this was a logistic nightmare for the Secret Service. Here is the scenario as I see it. We have a bunch of leftists, whether politicians or in the media or just influencers, whatever have you, pundits, who are all going out there making statements about how Donald Trump will be the end of our democracy if he's reelected. They never give evidence. Recently, they've been trying to throw Trump in with Project 2025, even though Trump has absolutely nothing to do with Project 2025. In fact, he came out and said he, he's not endorsing it because he has his own Agenda 47 plan. But if you want to say that it's Project 2025 that's going to end our democracy and you want to link it to Trump, at least read the damn thing. Because if you actually read it and understand it, and you are pro-Constitution. See, the people on the left are post-Constitutional. They don't believe in our Constitution. But if you do, you will read it and realize that it will strengthen our republic or our democracy, as they say. But they say it anyway, and they, they, they try to tie Trump to it. They don't give any reasons or expectations of how Trump will destroy our democracy because he's never acted that way in his first term. He's never said anything that's going to destroy our democracy. He has policies that he wants to implement that they don't like. But that's not a destruction of our democracy. And it's not just the Democrats that contribute to this harsh environment inside a Libnut's brain. We have David Frum. Okay? David Frum is a prominent never-Trumper, supposedly a Republican. He was a speechwriter for President George W. Bush. He published an article on Sunday in the Atlantic, the most notorious anti-Trump periodical out there, blaming former President Trump for his own attempt at assassination. Can you believe this? Trump is one of those guys who thinks he's an intellectual and that he's the smartest guy in the room. Just ask him and he'll tell you. In his Sunday piece titled The Gunman and the Would-Be Dictator. Can you believe this shit? He's saying that Trump had incited the violence that led to Saturday's attack. Does this a-hole even realize that he just contributed to the same type of hateful rhetoric that actually caused this maniac on Saturday to take a shot at Trump? So much for being the smartest guy in the room, right? This asshole can't even read the fucking room. Here's what he actually wrote. Now the bloodshed that Trump has done so much to incite against others has touched him as well. What bloodshed did he incite? Tell me. David Frum. Tell me, what bloodshed did he incite? He writes, the attempted murder of Trump and the killing of a person nearby is a horror and outrage. More will be learned about the man who committed this appalling act. Yeah, when they try to mold him into being a Republican Trump supporter, right? And who was killed by the Secret Service. Whatever his mania or motive, the only important, whatever his mania or motive, you don't shoot people that you like. I love how they're all saying, well, we still don't know the motive of this guy. What the hell do you think his motive was? All you lefties out there and you rhinos, you kept telling people, these lib nuts, for, what is it now, eight years almost? You kept telling them that Trump is dangerous to our country. That Even though he made America great again, he is dangerous to our country. And, and, and what you're not saying is you got to take him out. That's what they're not saying out loud, but why do they have to? They know that they got nuts out there that will do the dirty work for them. And then they'll act all magnanimous about, oh, well, we can't have, we can't have violence in the streets. And yet we got this asshole president we have every time he gives a speech. These MAGA extremists, they marched on the Capitol. They tried to overturn an election. I mean, so much lying is done by the left. People don't listen to it anymore, which is why Trump's going to win. That's why he's going to win. And like I said, we don't need the David Frums on the right. I think, I think we should make, like the RNC should make a bylaw saying, no more rhinos, get out, become Democrats. We don't care. We'll beat you in the election then. Just, just get out, right? Now, how can you deal with the Democrats and the never Trumpers in the GOP? These people have five layers of concrete protecting their brains. Nothing gets through. Now, where was Trump ever to promote that kind of violence? We know that Joe Biden did. He did all the time. No one talks about that. The beating at the gym. They don't want to mention it. You know, Trump never said to attack anyone despite the rhetoric that comes from these intellectual clowns who accused Trump of inciting January 6th. You know, we had the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, saying that Trump cannot be president. He must be stopped. What does that mean to a libnut with a gun? 
You know, Joe Biden recently said to put Trump in the bullseye. Now, I don't think he meant literally to put him in the bullseye. But see, they did that to Sarah Palin when she said, let's put a target on them. They said, oh, she meant to shoot. So fuck you, lefties. Joe Biden said to shoot Donald Trump. That's it. The rhetoric coming from these people that Trump is a dictator or a tyrant is beyond the pale. I mean, we just had Joey Reid linking him to Project 2025 and saying that that conservatives are going to destroy the country for anybody that's not a conservative. Jake Tapper and Dana Bash from CNN both referred to Donald Trump as Hitler, and yet they were put in as moderators in that disastrous debate from Joe Biden. If you're a lefty and someone told you that a guy running for president was Hitler, literally Hitler-esque, wouldn't you feel justification to take him out? I mean, the mentality of violence on the left is palpable. You can feel it. It's there. Yeah, you have people like Joe Biden saying that Antifa is not real, that it's just an idea. They call Trump a dictator and a threat to our democracy. But the guy they support, Joe Biden, has controlled our media. He has controlled big tech in a fascist manner where government forced them to censor opposing opinions. Biden wants to take away our guns so that you can't defend yourself. His ATF is hard at work closing down FFLs and gun shops all over the country over things as mundane as a paperwork spelling mistake. Joe Biden has weaponized the DOJ, FBI, CIA, IRS, ATF, you name it. And he's used it against his political enemies, including Donald Trump. Biden's DOJ is attacking Americans who differ from them in ideology. For example, they are attacking pro-life advocates who have done nothing wrong other than to try to stand up for the life of innocence. But because they don't like pro-life people, they arrest them. Even though they're the 500 feet or whatever it is away, and even though they don't incite any violence, they get arrested. It's to send a message. This is what communists do. The Democrats have used armies of street thugs like BLM and Antifa to do their dirty work for them. They want to eventually force everyone to take electric cars in their homes and to give up their gas running cars. I mean, think about that. They, they, they say that Donald Trump's going to be the dictator, but Joe Biden broke the law by relieving student loan debt and then... The Supreme Court said, you can't do it. You don't have the authority. He goes out there and brags and rallies. You know, they tried to tell me I can't forgive student loan debt. Well, screw that. I'm going to do it anyway. All right. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos so that you can stay up to date with what's going on with the violent rhetoric of the left. I'll see you in the next one. Too many secrets, too many closed doors missing to cover us. Sick of the cover ups, want the truth and nothing more. Yeah,